Hello, my name is Jim Sumption. <clears throat> We're going to make sauerkraut tonight. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in Springville, uh, graduated from Springville High. Um, we now live in Spanish Fork and uh, consider Spanish Fork our home. Uh, we've been here for, in our home right now for about almost 30 years and uh, love the area, love the people and uh, happy to be on the show tonight. We have seven children and uh, 17 grandchildren now with one more on the way. So this is uh, uh, maybe something I can include in my history, be become famous in the movies or something like that. Um, sauerkraut is uh, one of the oldest foods that people have ever uh, preserved. And uh, we're going to do just use cabbage and salt. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about why we're doing green and red here in just a second. Part of it is because of the color. And the other part is uh, because it, I think it tastes better. So that's, it makes it a more interesting in a couple of different ways. Um, you can spice it up um, either during the fermentation process or you can actually um, add the spices after the fermentation and get a more, more variety um, out of one batch of uh, sauerkraut because you uh, don't commit it, don't commit one kind of spice to the batch. So the tools I'm going to use uh, to slice the cabbage is a mandolin. I'll just take it out of the container so you can see the blade. I'm going to use a uh, Kyocera mandolin. It has a, it has a uh, white ceramic blade. Um, another one that I've used that works pretty well is OXO. It has a stainless blade. Um, but for tonight, we're going to use the we're going to use the Kyocera. You can buy those online in just about any. Uh, all you have to do is just search for mandolin and pick the one you like. Um, the other tools that we're going to use we're going to use a stainless steel bowl, some measuring spoons, a scale electronic scale because we want the right amount of salt for the amount of cabbage that will fit in our two quart jar. The, the fermenting lid that I'm going to use is called Jim's Jar Top Fermenter. I actually manufacture that and sell it and it will fit on any wide mouth mason jar. I'm just going to set this off to the side for now until we need it and uh, when I'm working with food, I like to use gloves, and so I'll just slip those on real quick, and uh, we'll start slicing up the cabbage. That two-quart jar will take about three and a half pounds of sliced cabbage. So I do half green and half red. I usually start with the green for no good reason other than that's what I do. So I'll move these things out of the way. Turn on my scale. So the very first thing I'm going to do with the cabbage is I'm going to cut two little circles out here that I'm going to use after the cabbage is sliced and the last thing that goes in the jar. So I'll explain more about that when we get there. So the lid makes a pretty good little um, guide for me here. Just cut that out and set it aside. Find another leaf. Just so you can see, I've cut it out so that the stem is vertical. That is a sturdier part of the leaf because of what I'm going to use it for. It's helpful if you do that. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm actually going to cut these in half when I probably do it right now as soon as I finish cutting this out. So I'll just set those aside. It's easiest if you just tip them upside down like that. And then I cut vertically across the stem. So you can see how it fit together. 
and I just do that with both of them and I'll explain what I use it for when I get to that part of the presentation. I'll just set those in a little pile, put the knife away, and now I'm going to slice the cabbage. I don't like to use the word shred because most people think of a different tool. I'm going to use a slicer. This little mandolin, I like the mandolin because it's adjustable. There's a little thing you can adjust the thickness of the slices. I like to use this one because it gives me a nice um, kind of an angel hair thick slice. And one of the reasons that's important when you're making sauerkraut is because the salt you add to the, to the sauerkraut or to the cabbage is for um, is to pull the juice out. And the more surface area you have um, for the juice to come out, the quicker it comes. So I may get some bigger pieces in here. Um, sometimes I leave them, sometimes I pull them out. And if I've got too many leftovers, I just feed them to the chickens. Chickens are always happy when I make a batch of sauerkraut because they get a little treat the next morning. So I'm just going to, half of three and a half pounds is one pound and 12 ounces. So that's what I'm watching for on the scale. You don't see the readout here, but I'm kind of keeping track of it. And the only other thing that you want to be careful of when you're using a mandolin, those blades are sharp. You want to keep your fingers out of the way. Some people will, will actually cut the cabbage into smaller pieces because they're a little bit more manageable. And some mandolins have a, a little safety device that they don't actually even touch the cabbage, so there's no way they can get their fingers stuck in, in the blade. So we're up to almost 12 ounces. We've got another pound to go. Um, we, used to, we started out making sauerkraut a number of years ago. Um, we used a mandolin slicer like this, but we, wouldn't, we didn't have a mason jar or a lid that would let us ferment in the mason jar. So we'd use a five gallon bucket. Um, in the old days, they used to use a big wooden barrel that they'd keep down in the basement. And uh, when they were ready to, they just, after the garden was finished, it, Harvest time, they would bring in hundreds of heads of cabbage and they would slice them up, put them in the barrel, add a little salt, pound it, add some more cabbage, some more salt, pound it, and, uh, and then they'd just keep that down in the basement over the winter, and that was their source of vitamin C and a lot of other good nourishing things. One of the, uh, and then they just put a, a rock or a plate on top with a, a rock so that it would hold the cabbage down into the brine. And uh, when they were ready to eat sauerkraut, they would go down with their pan and they would skim the mold off the top of the juice, take the rock out and uh, get some of the sauerkraut and take it up and have it for dinner. And that's kind of what we dealt with uh, when we were using the five gallon bucket and it just wasn't as appetizing. And uh, we came across these little fermenting uh, the tools. I'll show you more in detail how they work here in just a minute. Um, but you just totally get away from the mold and uh, you can make smaller batches. It's not exactly the, uh, uh, the method you, you might need if you have a whole garden full of cabbage and you want to make sauerkraut out of all of it, but uh, it's, uh, it's great for making small batches and, uh, and then you can use some variety. And I tell people that, that uh, I grow my cabbages here at Macy's. They grow a great cabbage at Macy's. So. All right, I'm at one pound, ten ounces. I got two ounces to go. Another interesting thing about sauerkraut is people 
think they either like it or hate it. And uh, I was talking to a guy the other, not too, not too long ago, who uh, I was doing a little demonstration like this and I offered him a taste of some finished sauerkraut. He said, he just looked me dead in the eye, he says, I hate sauerkraut. We talked a little bit and finally he decided to go ahead and taste it. Because the sauerkraut you buy in the grocery store is just cooked cabbage pickled in vinegar. And some people don't like vinegar. Some people can't eat vinegar uh, the way it is um, used in a lot of the products. And uh, I think we're finished with this one. I can start with the red one now. Anyway, so we were talking and uh, he decided to take a little taste and he got this really confused look on his face. He goes, I hate sauerkraut, but I could eat this. <laughs> and so I find a lot of people have told me that they don't like sauerkraut, but when they taste what homemade sauerkraut is like, it's nothing like what you buy in a can in the grocery store. And so it's a, it's a, it's a treat. Don't be afraid to try it. Well, I make, sour, I, I make sauerkraut because I like sauerkraut, for one thing. And uh, another thing that's very popular today and that you hear a lot of people talk about is probiotics. Some people buy probiotics in a pill, they, uh, and they take, they take it that way. Um, what you may or may not be aware of is that fermented foods are a natural source of lots of probiotics. And uh, the reason that it is, when I add salt to this, it's going to pull the juice out of the cabbage. And there are little bacteria that occur naturally on all vegetables and uh, on the skins of all vegetables. And in the right environment, those bacteria will flourish and they're the probiotic bacteria. Um, we call them lactobacillus. And the lactobacillus love the cabbage juice and they, and they like the salt brine. And we give them uh, an environment in this jar where there, it's also anaerobic so that it forces the oxygen out. Um, because the byproducts from the, uh, the lactobacillus eating the juice are two. Number one is lactic acid. That's the sour flavor that you taste in the uh, in the sauerkraut. And number three, number two, that's the first one. Number two is carbon dioxide. So this lid allows the carbon dioxide to escape the jar without letting any mold and oxygen back into the jar. And it helps to create an environment for the um, for the bacteria to flourish and do the things that it needs to do in producing the probiotic, the probiotics. I started eating it when I got married. I used to eat the canned stuff and it was okay. Um, but my wife grew up on a farm out in Midwestern Canada. They didn't have running water when she was a little girl. They didn't have indoor plumbing and so her grandma and grandpa, that's how they made sauerkraut. I mean, that's just what they did. They had a barrel down in the basement. And uh, so she was the one that really introduced me to um, making it like this. And uh, so I've, I've become accustomed to eating it fresh and uh, making our own. So she taught me how to do it, but I make the sauerkraut in our family. Actually, she was uh, at home last night. She harvested our first cabbage from this year's garden, and she made a batch of sauerkraut with it. So I can't say I make it all, but, but she made one fresh from the garden last night, and uh, in four days, it will be ready to eat, ready to start eating. The fermentation process can take from, depending on how strong you like the sauerkraut, can take anywhere from four days, you can start eating it after four days, up to, um, I've left it in the jar for up to two months, no problem with mold, 
And if you like sauerkraut, sauerkraut, you get sauerkraut after two months. It's really strong. Okay, we're up to three pounds, four ounces. We got three more ounces to go. Three pounds, five ounces. So we're just about finished. Doesn't take very long to do this. So food processor works fine. Um, if you have problems with uh, arthritis, something like that, the um, you won't get as fine a cut of cabbage if you're using a food processor. Uh, so the juice may take a little bit longer to be drawn out with the salt. Um, but I've done it. I've done it both ways. It makes decent sauerkraut either way. Okay, three pounds, nine ounces. I have just a little bit extra. I may not put it all in the jar when we're ready to do that, but that's basically all I need is three and a half pounds of cabbage. next ingredient, and the only other ingredient in sauerkraut, is sea salt. I like to use the Redmond Real Salt. It's available here at Macy's. Um, just about any other health food store or grocery store carries it. It's, it is a, a good Utah product, and I use one teaspoon of salt for each pound of cabbage. So I'm going to use one tablespoon, which is three teaspoons, and then a half a teaspoon. And that's all I'm going to put in it. That's probably all I need just there. It's not a, an exact science, but you want to get as close as, close as possible. Um, you may have noticed on the film that I spilled a little bit extra. I think that's a half a teaspoon that I need. That's what we're going to do anyway. I'll set that aside. And the next part of what I do is I just Mix the salt in with the cabbage. And that kind of makes the colors combine. And, and uh, before very long, you'll start to see this cabbage changes color as it gets, as it starts, um, as the salt starts pulling the juice out. I can already feel the difference as I'm just mixing it. I'm not squeezing it hard or anything like that. I'm just massaging it kind of with my, with my hands. And that's another reason why I like to use gloves. It just keeps it a little bit more sanitary and uh, I don't have to worry about whether or not I clipped my fingernails. You might be able to hear the squeaky, the squeaky wet sound. This usually takes about five minutes before I've, I've got enough juice that I can pack it in the jar. So if you look right now, if I squeeze it, we're already getting pretty good juice coming out of it. I want just a little bit more. You may have noticed at the beginning, the pile looked a lot bigger in the, in the bowl and probably looked like it would never fit inside that two quart jar, but uh, it'll fit. So now it's 
kind of about the size of a so half of a soccer ball on the bottom of the bowl. And I'm just going to wash my hands real quick. I wash them by changing the gloves. Because I don't want a bunch of cabbage on the outside of my jar. So I, I, I mean, I don't really need to change them, but I like to because it makes it uh, just a little bit cleaner. The other tool I'm going to use, I should just mention, this is a two-quart, a two-quart mason jar, um, wide mouth. Um, this is made by Ball, and Macy sells these bottles as well. And then I like to use this funnel. If you look underneath, it's called Bottle Mate. You can buy these online, and it fits. Actually, this fits inside the jar. This is on the outside of the jar, so. When you're putting the food in, the lip of the jar doesn't get any cabbage on it, so it makes it a lot easier to deal with. And I'm just going to start filling up the jar. As it gets a little bit fuller, I'll push it down in, kind of pack it in. And you'll, what you'll see is the juice from the cabbage will rise to the top of the jar. And so it'll be just a, a solid mass of food. There won't be a little tiny bit of air in there, but not very much. I don't know if you can see in the bottom of the bowl that there's liquid accumulated in there. We'll pour that into the jar when we're ready, once we've got all the cabbage out of it. So, I've still got a cabbage hand here. I've got a clean glove so I can grab the jar and not have to wash it off so much afterwards. Now you can start seeing the juice coming up. Just put it all in. Can you see that okay? Right now, if you were to taste this, it would just be salty cabbage. And uh, and that's, it's just kind of, it's a gradual process over the course of about four days, depending on, or longer, how, depending on how long or how strong you like the sauerkraut. I tell people if you like it stronger, you can leave it longer. And that's the way, that's the way I remember how to do that. It's not uncommon to have a little bit of foam on top. It's just kind of a natural thing. If you've got a lot of foam, you may want to scoop it out, but now we're going to use these little leaves. And so I'm going to take the rounded portion of the leaf and I'm just going to insert it into one corner of the jar. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the little airlock device that I'll show you here in a moment um, doesn't get clogged up with little pieces of cabbage. And this lets the, uh, it holds the, the little pieces of cabbage down underneath the brine. And, uh, and they don't get in the way. And so I'll just kind of push that down a little bit with my fingers. You can see the juice is well above, is well above the, uh, those leaves. And now comes Jim's Jar Top Fermenter. And I'm, I'm not going to open that box. I'll just show you what's inside of it. There's a little airlock device. We'll put some water in that here in a minute. That lets 
the carbon dioxide out of the jar without letting the mold and oxygen back in. There's a little um, glass cup with a divot ground into the, into the edge. That makes it so that as the cabbage ferments, it will expand and the juice will come up and actually come up to the top of this lid. That little divot keeps the juice from letting that cup seal against the lid. So it keeps a, a little path into the jar, or out of the jar actually. And then the cup also acts as an overflow reservoir for the extra juice. And so if you, I'll show you in just a minute, I'll show you a, um, a, uh, a jar that's about three days old, two or three days old, and what to expect once the fermentation starts to mature. Okay, and then what I do is I just, I've just moistened the little red rubber gasket that comes in the kit. There's a black rubber grommet that's inside the, uh, in the center of that lid, and then a white plastic ring. And I'm just going to screw that on tight there. I'm gonna go put some water in this airlock. So if you can see, it's probably not possible to see on the camera, but there are two little lines on the side of this airlock. I've filled the water to the top line. This little lid has little holes in it, so the gas that comes up through the stem and out through the airlock can escape into the environment. And then I just insert that um, so that there's a seal on the grommet. And that is ready to, in four days, that will be a great batch of sauerkraut. So let me, uh, let me get a couple of jars that are farther along in the process so that you can see the difference in the color and what happens. This is the new one that we just put together. Um, this one I put together, uh, actually, yeah, this is newest to oldest. I put it in that sequence. This one is two days old tonight, so it's been in the fermenting jar for two days. This has been in there for three days, and this was in there for about five days before I put it in the refrigerator. Um, by tomorrow night, this jar will have juice pretty much up to the top of the jar. Probably won't be any in the airlock. It's not uncommon to get, a little, to get juice in the airlock like this. For that reason though, I keep this jar on my countertop in a glass cake pan. So if it does leak, it's not leaking onto the cupboard, it's leaking into the container. Um, so if you see juice coming up in the stem of the airlock like this, <clears throat> you know that the little cup inside is full. And so what you're going to do, what you, what you should do at that point, is just take it apart, dump it out, clean up the airlock, and put it back together. So here's the little cup, clear full of juice. I'm not going to take extra juice out, I'm just going to dump what's in this cup because the cabbage will eventually reabsorb most of this juice. So we'll just cut for a minute while I clean this up and then we'll put it back together. Okay, so I'm back, I've got everything pretty much cleaned up. I'm just going to set that cup empty now into the jar and put the lid back on. Okay, I'm put some water, fresh water in the airlock. That water doesn't actually get into the cabbage, so it can be tap water. Um, just screw this back on. And it's, it's unusual for that to fill up again, because by the end of four days, the cabbage has already started to start to reabsorb the juice. I, there's a real difference in color between this brand new one, two days old, three days old and the finished. But by the end of four days, this one will look just like this one. It, it 
makes a really beautiful maroon color sauerkraut. And that's another reason why I like to use the, uh, the red and green mix. It's a little bit strong if you just use red. And you get a different flavor if you just use green. But they work, they work really well. Um, I just make a mention of a couple of things. If you cut the cabbage coarse with a knife or with a food processor or something like that, and, and you have trouble getting um, enough juice out of it to do what this did, um, rather than add salt to it, you may want to use a salt brine. Um, the salt brine, you cannot use chlorinated water. You can't use iodized salt in any of these products because chlorine and iodine are antibacterial and you will interfere with the fermenting process if you use a bacterial agent like chlorine or, or uh, iodine. So anyway, it's either just salt or a salt brine. You, ha you, you may have to experiment a little bit depending on how coarse the cabbage is. Um, but for my sauerkraut and a mandolin slicer, I never add any water to it. It's all just cabbage juice that the salt has pulled out. And uh, really all there is now is I just leave this, I don't leave it, I don't have to put it, you don't have to put it in a dark place. You want it in a place where it's about 70 degrees, that's ideal. Um, I've experimented a little bit with a, um, if, you're, if you don't have a basement where it's, you can get a 70 degrees, a little bit warmer than that is okay. Uh, I've experimented with a cooler and, and a little fro uh, freezer pack or something like that. That will help to, uh, it won't make it cold, so cold that it would not, that the fermenting wouldn't work, um, but it will keep it a little bit cooler. And uh, so I've done that and that's worked okay. And other than that, we just have to wait until it's finished fermenting. And then what I do once it's finished, I'll take this lid off, put a regular lid on, and just put it in the refrigerator. And if all of the juice hasn't been absorbed by that point in time, it will by the time it, get, it cools off. The cabbage will just reabsorb all the juice. And, uh, and it will keep in the fridge just like a bottle of dill pickles off the store shelf. It will be there until you finish eating it. Um, one thing that I have done with um, the sauerkraut that makes a really, really yummy um, uh, concoction, I guess you would call it. Um, if you just take a little bit of the sauerkraut, the cold sauerkraut, take a really sweet apple and grate the apple into the already fermented sauerkraut, Wow, does that taste good. Just mix that together, serve it. You can do a bowl of it and, and just serve it that way. And, uh, and the contrast between the very sweet and the mild sauerkraut flavor is really, really good. You can also do it with raisins, like a carrot raisin um, salad. Uh, you can do that with sauerkraut and it makes really a lovely, um, a lovely dish. You can use cumin, you can use fennel, you can use, um, um, what's another, caraway seeds. Those, those all really add a different little twist to the sauerkraut. So if you like some of those spices, take some of the sauerkraut out, add some of the spice, mix it up, put it in the fridge, let it um, uh, just mature a little bit. It will pull some of the spice flavor out of the seeds. You can use ground or whole seeds and then uh, serve it the next day. And that, that really adds a nice little twist and variety to the sauerkraut as well. Some people like sauerkraut with a hot dog. Um, some people like it just as a side dish um, for, I don't know. I had some last night with the, with the, baked potato and it makes it makes a nice little a nice little side dish for just about anything um, I don't generally eat it all by itself but you sure could if you wanted to I've done it before um, uh, 
refried beans. It, it, it tastes pretty good mixed with refried beans. If you would like one of these and you're in the Spanish Fork area, you can buy them at Beehive Health Food Store. You can buy them in Springville at Ginger's Cafe. Um, or you can send me an email and I'll make other arrangements for you. My email address is jes1952 at gmail.com. My phone number is 801-319-2459. So I happen to like sauerkraut. I don't think it's something I could eat every day. I usually get the stuff from the store that's white, you know, and vinegary, so this will be interesting to try this. I do like it on hot dogs. Let's grab a couple of forks here. So I made this one back on the 4th of June. It was in the fermenting pot for about five days and uh, it's been in the refrigerator ever since. Okay. So, it's a beautiful red purple color. Notice that you don't see the green and red it's all red. Yeah. That's because the juice has been reabsorbed by all of the cabbage in it. Yeah. And the smell smells like cabbage. It doesn't smell like vinegar, like this, like the cheap stuff that I buy. <laughs> okay. So, and it's firm. Holds to the leaves are holding together, not falling apart. Okay. Here we go. It's very mild. It's, it's not that harsh vinegary right. taste yep. that, you, that you normally, yeah. Hmm. You could eat that, couldn't you? I could eat that, <laughs> just a bowl full of it. Yes, I certainly could. Well, thank you, Mr. Sumption. Sure appreciate this. You're welcome. And I hope you people at home will try this recipe and uh, increase your probiotics. So yeah, one, yeah. one other thing that I should say, and that is that if you send me your email address, I'll be happy to send you the recipes. Excellent. Appreciate that. Send me a, an email and I'll be happy to send you the recipes. Okay. Thank you again. So uh, join us next week at Macy's and Spanish Fork for our cooking show. And if you can't make it there, make sure you tune in to Spanish Fork 17 at 10 o'clock on Fridays. And also you can catch us on YouTube. Okay, let's cut.